for 20 years, for 20 years, for 20 years I lived in fear. You know, for 20 years I was, I couldn't even be myself around, sorry, I couldn't even be myself around my own mum and dad. I was actually frightened of people. I was frightened of my, I was frightened of my own mum and dad, my brother, my family, my aunties, my friends, uh, especially strangers. And I was suffering from um, social anxiety disorder. And this, I was so frightened of this fear for years. For years I actually pretended to myself as a way to cope with it, that it didn't exist. <clears throat> and there was a number of reasons why, there was a number, there was a num numerous reasons why, sorry, I pretended that the fear didn't exist and that was because I was deeply ashamed about it. I was deeply ashamed and it's quite hard to, to quantify it and put it into words, but I was frightened of dying. I was actually, and that's not an exaggeration, I was frightened of dying and I was frightened of living. Because I lived with this condition for, since I was 10 years of age up to 30. I only overcome my social anxiety in the last three years. Uh, after really working on myself and actually getting help, getting some support. And um, so I know how you feel. I know, I know how you feel when you don't feel safe around your own mum and dad. You feel confused. Because I used to, I used to feel bad, but I used to, one day I felt like I loved mum and dad, the next day I felt like I completely hate them. And I just felt like I hated people. And this was because how I felt about myself. <clears throat> one of the most crippling fears for me was not just the fear of people, what would always happen to me as soon as I came in contact with people. Like if my mum just walked in the room with my dad, there'd always, there'd always be this fear that I'd have to adjust myself. So effectively what I was doing was, I was people pleasing. I was actually putting on a mask changing to suit my mum or dad. I had a good reason for this fear. This wasn't something I made up in my mind. It, it wasn't something I made up to get attention or to feel sorry for myself. This is actually real because my dad was extremely abusive to me growing up. He was an extremely violent man. He was physically abusive. He used to hit me, lay into me. And he was verbally really abusive and very manipulative, very narcissistic and his behaviors. And he, aside of that, the contradiction was he could be incredibly nice. He could be a really nice loving man. But that's why I was so frightened of him because Physically, I was frightened of him because he used to beat me and I couldn't physically get the better of my dad. And I didn't want to fight with my dad. And socially, he scared the shit out of me, intimidated me, just by looking at me. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even look at my dad in the eye. If I looked him in the eye, he would say to me, please excuse my language, he'd say, what the fuck are you staring at me like that for? Do you take me for a cunt? I'm sorry to use graphic language, but this is the truth. And he was saying this to me when I was, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, I was, I was a kid and it terrified me and I couldn't look at my mum properly in the eye and I couldn't then, I didn't realise till a few years later, I had this with everyone, I had it with everyone, aunties, my brother, it was unconscious. So I was consciously aware of it and then years later I, I couldn't. I couldn't deal with hating myself and having these feelings towards people. So in psychology it's commonly termed as coping mechanisms or defensive mechanisms, sub-personalities -pers and shadow selves. So I, my ego, my coping mechanism developed lots of coping strategies. One of the things that I really hated about myself, absolutely despised it, was the fact that I was always people pleasing with people. And it's almost hard for me in a video to break down what people pleasing is because most people think people pleasing is just when you're being agreeable. And of course that is people pleasing in a nutshell. But for me it actually went further than that. For me people pleasing is when you physically, emotionally can't be yourself around people. 
and that's why I've done so many inappropriate things in my life. And it's interesting because I was just thinking about early on, that's why I was violent, incredibly violent to people. Like I actually became a bully myself, which is never a comfortable thing to admit as a way to cope with what my dad did to me, to protect myself from further bullying. And I always attracted trouble because I've late, I later learned this growing up and I knew it since I was a kid. Other bullies sense when you're frightened and people in general sense when you're nervous. Like I knew that people could read in my facial expressions, in my voice. They could, people could hear the shame in my voice, they could hear the uncertainty and they could read it on my face and pe some people bullied me because of it. And I think when we say the word bullying, we immediately think physical. No, most of the times I got bullied, it was, it was on a social level. I got bullied physically by my dad all throughout my teens. It probably stopped when I got to about age 23. But socially, all my family bullied me. I had no personal boundaries. I, I, didn't, even, I didn't even have the confidence to say no to people. I, my, my psychology was so damaged. I thought if I said no to someone, like, that was rude. But to contradict that, sometimes I'd lose my temp temper with people, friends. I lost relationships with friends. I hit friends because I had so much insecurity that was unconscious, a fear of abandonment. And I felt that my dad had abandoned me through his behaviours and how he treated me and the fact that I, I couldn't fully love him, I couldn't trust him. And that relationship transferred onto everyone. And for years I, I, could, I couldn't talk about it because it, it didn't even make any sense to me. In, in my mind, logically, intellectually, I was thinking, how on earth can I be frightened of my own mum and dad? Like, there must be something seriously wrong with me. How can I be frightened of human beings? Like, that is the least, <laughs> that is the least thing you're expected to do in the world, is to be able to socialise with people. But the truth was, I was frightened of people. And as I said, I hid it for many years. And, and lots of people that I grew up, lots of my friends, would probably not have realised that. So I know that I've contradicted in a lot of what I've said because my social anxiety, my story was contradiction. It was this love-hate relationship, as I said, it was one day feeling that I love mum and dad, the next week thinking that I completely hate them and I just can't bear to be around them and I hate myself. And I feel like that with my relationships with friends. And as more years went on and I did more research and overcome this, I realised actually it wasn't my fault that I felt like that. I used to beat myself up and I had horrific inner voices, horrible black men inner voices. And the worst part of the social anxiety, as I said, it wasn't actually just the fear of people on my dad. It was actually the fear of confronting it. it the biggest fear was this, was just to admit it and talk about it. I was too frightened to get a counsellor to get help because I was frightened of being judged. I felt like if I admitted it, that would mean abandonment for eternity. Abandonment by actually my family, by my friends, by society, uh, by the creator of the universe, God. And I would never be able to undo that. So to admit my insecurity would, would mean people are going to use it against me as a weakness. Now they'll take advantage of me, the game's up. But I didn't realise at a deeper level that was actually the way to overcome this and that was an irrational, psychotic, egoic fear. That wasn't true. Of course there was, there was room and time for me to change and overcome this. Millions of people around the world that suffered this condition. But at the time, especially in my 20s, I had a, my ego was really strong. I was convinced that I was the only one who felt like this. And of course, one of the other really uncomfortable personality disorders that I had was extreme excessive jealousy. Jealousy towards family, jealousy towards my friend. Now, of course, I know that everyone, everyone experiences jealousy. It's part of being a human being, but I knew that my jealousy was, was uncontrollable. It was, it was extreme. It was out of control. Uh, my thinking was jealous and my feelings towards people that did better than me just would get jealous really easily. If I wasn't getting an attention in a group, I'd feel jealousy. If my mum didn't acknowledge me, I was, became very sensitive. And, and again, it, this all equated, if that makes sense, that word. I say words that don't make sense to Irish in me. 
if it all went back to the belief that I've been abandoned by my dad and because I didn't trust my dad because he broke my trust that went on to my mum that went on to my family that went on to people I met and another uncomfortable fear was when I look at people sometimes I would just feel hatred pure hatred and rage I'd actually feel physically like hurting them because of the, the pain I was in at the way my father had treated me. What was more hurtful was, at the time, but later on became massively a relief and really helped me, was when I remembered that I wasn't always like this. So it wasn't like I was born psychotic, jealous, a bully and aggressive person. I was actually a lovely guy. I was actually a lovely, charming kid, trusting man who loved my dad, loved my mum, loved my family loved kids in school in nursery but it was after the abuse happened with my dad and and years later as i said i developed a lot of sub personalities and i'm just referencing this to explain to anyone watching this video because i just feel this helps sometimes i i didn't need to read psychological books to know what was wrong with me because i lived with myself and i did recognize the flaws in my i i i over analyzed social situations like a maniac like every single word a person would say to me, I would be thinking, how do I respond to that? I had, I had, I had intense em embarrassment was not the word. I was embarrassed to eat in front of people. I was embarrassed to walk down the street. Just little things like going up and buying a coffee, buying trainers. I used to dread the interaction with a person at the checkout. Like I remember the, the anxiety I'd feel, my heart would be beating and I'd have to look down if I was like dealing with someone in a shop or even going to the train station or getting on a bus, I couldn't like, I couldn't maintain eye contact, I couldn't maintain eye contact for more than like a second. I'd always look down. And all my personalities were, were, de were basically designed around avoidance. So every time I made friends with people, as the relationship got more intimate, I would unconsciously ruin it by a dysfunctional behaviour or by finding faults in people and as I said I, the jealousy and the distrust of people created a lot of paranoia, I suffered paranoid thoughts, I could be with a friend for hours, feel great and all of a sudden I just, I go into this feeling of panic, look at the person and think they're going to betray me, tomorrow they're going to try and cause trouble, they're going to, I didn't trust anyone, I didn't trust people, it was a, it was a horrible way to live. And it resulted in me suffering from a lot of depression, a lot of suicidal thoughts. Many times through my 20s, I felt like killing myself. And I'd always be hit by a million voices saying, you're looking for sympathy, you're not being a man, you're trying to find an easy way out, you can't deal with life, you're creating things that, are not, that don't exist, you're dramatizing things. So I never opened up. I never opened up. I couldn't be open. And the reason why I couldn't open up was because of the distrust. Unconsciously, there was a fear. I felt that, I'll tell you how I felt. If I open up and I'm myself with people, they're gonna use that against me. So it's, almost, it's weird to say it, but I almost felt like, uh, it's, it's mad to say this, but it's almost like the CIA, the CIA or a, a private organization that are not allowed to give out information to people because it could harm them. That's how I felt. Like just what I'm doing now, being open and honest, I felt, this voice used to always come up and say, you can't, it's not safe, can't trust this person. And I didn't realize at the time that it was all a projection of, of me. I didn't trust myself. And that's where all of these behaviors came from. I had a stuttering problem. Um, I, I hated speaking in front of people. Even one person, if I was in a conversation with a person, I'd always get like an interrupt, a fit of fear and anxiety. I'd start talking fast or, I would cut the person off, and it was all this fear of protecting myself, and it all traced back, as I said to my dad, it was like, um, it was like every person in front of me was him, even if it was an attractive woman, my mum, it was like, it was a projection, it was an illusion. Of course it was irrational, I realise that now, and I seriously didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to overcome this, it felt impossible. I couldn't go to job interviews, I couldn't go to parties. I just couldn't deal with people. 
and I couldn't escape it because I was actually frightened. I was afraid by myself. When I was by myself, I'd experience demonic, horrible inner voices, anxiety, fear, all the fears known to man. A fear of never being loved by people, uh, a fear of being in poverty, never making money, a fear of never getting a job, and a fear of never overcoming the condition and always feeling that my dad is going to be controlling me, bullying me. So I, I didn't know where to start. I did not know where to start. And I think for most people with social anxiety, I, I took the easier route, which is denial, addictions, and I, I did all the wrong things. Uh, drugs, I was a drug dealer, crime, beat, beating people up, stealing, dishonesty, cheating in relationships. I did every sin in the book, every sin you can think of, as a way to run away from this fear. And guess what? It never got rid of it. And in my, when I got to 23 in my later 20s, I'd started to work on myself heavily in personal development. I started with weight training down the gym and I built a fantastic physique at the time. And I, I got into pickup artistry, learning to meet women. And that helped me a lot initially because I developed a lot of confidence. I had sex with quite a lot of women. I'm sure you don't think I'm being arrogant, I'm just telling the truth. I set my own business up, I taught people on the road, but as I said, when I got to age 30, I had a relapse, and I realized that I was still hiding. I wasn't as hiding as much as I was in my earlier 20s, but I still was battling with my demons from my dad. So I still had this social anxiety, despite being a famous teacher, teaching all around the world, public talks, I was still hiding. And when I got to 30, I just thought, I can't live like this anymore. I can't live a lie, I can't wear a mask. Um, in work, in my professional life, with, with women I was dating, with my family, and I can't lie to myself anymore. This, this is going to eat me up for the rest of my life. So the protective personalities um, achieved me a lot of what you'd call worldly success. I made money and I was able, actually able to help a lot of people around the world through YouTube videos and through um, personal teaching. But I wasn't kind to myself because I was, I was still, there were still parts of me that were hiding. And I got to a stage where I just thought, I need to get rid of this. This is not who I am. I'm not a racist prejudice a man um, stealing and cheating. This is just not in my nature. And this hate towards people and this paranoia. And as I said, I, I spent a lot of years trying to please people and then I got angry for doing it. So I, I was completely disassociated with who I was because I was never allowed to be myself around my dad. He physically wouldn't let me, he physically hit me and he bullied me socially. And, and the social bullying was bad and friends bullied me as well. They bullied me on a, on a social level. And I think a lot of the bullying that friends did to me was a projection of my own, own insecurity. So I wasn't treating them the best in all honesty I wasn't really treating them kindly because of paranoia paranoia makes you not trust people so I could only trust people as far as my psychology would allow me but like I said there, there's been a there was a lot of contradiction in social anxiety and in my relationships and through further examining and help from a really good mentor and being a teacher myself for many years and helping people in the same area of confidence and meeting women I actually got right down to the core of, of my fear. So I almost had to go through different layers of fears to get right down to exactly what the fear was. And as I said, yes, it was a fear of abandonment. It was a fear of being judged. It was a fear of, it was a fear of not being liked. But the, actual, the actuality of the fear was actually a fear of overcoming it and being fully in line with who I am today, being my true self. Because I've realized psychologically that would mean risking being abandoned by my mum and dad and losing close friends at the time and actually revealing who I was. And that that actually brought on more fear than than before than hiding. So hiding was hiding hiding was less painful then, then changing. And changing was something that I've wanted to do since I was a kid. I, want, I wanted to go back to who I was before my dad did this. 
So psychologically, I had to face my dad. And I actually faced him in real terms by going to him in person and actually confronting him non-violently socially and telling him what he did was wrong and also forgiving him verbally, emotionally and that just took so much of my pain away. I can't even explain to you how much that did for me and my confidence. And of course that I also had to confront myself. <clears throat> I had to look myself in the mirror and account for all the bad things I did. Like I said, it was violent bullying. I did a lot of bad things to people that I was incredibly ashamed about. Cheating on women, being abusive, lying, stealing, and being addicted to many of the wrong things, paying prostitutes sex. So this was over a course of 10 years, so I had to account for this. But I can't tell you it was the most excruciating, painful, but the most beautiful, relieving thing I've ever did in my life. And there was no amount of money, there was no amount of sex with women, no amount of validation, the people pleasing and bullying that could account for how good it felt to finally take this mask off. And I did this over the course of three years. And I had to forgive myself for all the bad things I did by admitting to them and accepting the consequences which were a nervous breakdown, suffering, depression. And I had to accept that and not complain, which I did. But standing up to my dad was, took me a lot of courage. But when I actually did it, I wasn't frightened. So the actual fear itself, as much as it, it was just an illusion. It was a complete illusion. And the fear of standing up to friends at the time, some friends that were actually manipulating me and bullying me, because they knew, they knew I was nervous socially. Physically, they, were, they couldn't push me that far because they knew physically. I was a very physical guy, very violent. But I didn't want to live like that. I didn't want to be a violent person in my relationships. I, I couldn't stand violence. It was just a protective mechanism. I actually wanted to have the social confidence to not be violent and be a loving person and get along with people, but stand up for myself and not let people take advantage of me. Because one of the things I learned about life and people is that there are so many beautiful, amazing um, people in the world, but of course there are a lot of insecure people probably like myself, that have been damaged, not addressed their issues, and they try and bully other people to get some kind of sense of identity, which is not right. So, you can probably hear from my story that I made all the mistakes. And that's why I've got so much compassion and empathy for people that, that have got such things like, so I know exactly how it feels and I understand the rationalizations as to why you're probably doing the things you're doing. But all I can say is share my story with you, that honesty, honesty and love was the only way to overcome this and it had to be done gradually. So when I finally overcome this, I realized that it was me, it was me projecting all this onto people, onto life. And it, was, it wasn't my fault that I had social anxiety. I couldn't help that. I could not help what my dad did to me. That was out of my control. I was 10, 11, 12, 13. He was my dad, he was someone. I, I actually idolized, loved my dad. It really hurt me, deeply traumatized me. Even at the time I was rationalized it, I don't care, I hate him, he's hurt me, he's a bully, I don't want to speak to him again. I did, it hurt me because I loved him. And that's what happens when people hurt us. If we didn't care about the person, we wouldn't be so emotionally, we wouldn't be so emotional about it, which it was. So as I said, it was a really confusing, contradicting fear to have, to love your family but not trust them. Always thinking that they might abandon you, they might just stop loving you. And you develop these behaviours to cope with that and to please them, which I realised wasn't right. You shouldn't have to please and lie to anyone to get, get their love. That's not love. You shouldn't have to manipulate and lie. So, just what I'm doing now, I had to stand up to it, and it was, it was incredible, I overcome it, I made a full recovery. So I'm just saying, if you're watching this video, you can overcome your social anxiety, you can stop people bullying you, you can stop yourself bullying other people, and start loving people, loving yourself. So I wanted to share that with you, and say that's how I did it, by taking my mask off and just becoming an honest person, and becoming socially confident.